you want to unleash the full potential of your Mavic Air 2 or Air 2S, well, keep watching, I will show you how. So today we are unleashing the full potential of your Air 2S or Air 2. Alright, so now we are in the DJI Fly app with the Mavic Air 2. Let's start with that one first. Let's go through all the settings that I have. Personally, flight assistance is off. I, uh, I, don't, I don't like the obstacle avoidance messing up with my shots when I fly through places very close to some branches or buildings. It tends to freak out and stop the shot that will ruin your shot. So if, uh, if you want to get the most out of your drone, turn this stuff off. But then again, you need to be slightly more experienced uh, and you need to trust your skills to be flying with the assistance off. Be confident. Be confident that you know what to do. Just keep calm and react when you have to react. So let's go into the control section. Here in control section, we will see that we can allow upward gimbal rotation. So this will allow us to take a look up with the gimbal, which is very cool. It will allow you to achieve insanely amazing shots. This upwards gimbal rotation thing should be checked because it's, it's just amazing to be able to check uh, what's, what's up there. Advanced gimbal settings. This is the part where a lot of people ask me what are my gimbal settings? And I keep answering the same question and it's this. It's pitch speed is 10 and smoothness is 25 so that you can achieve smooth starts and smooth stops with your gimbal movement. Of course, you can get it even faster as well, but uh, it's meant so you could move fairly quickly and stop very smoothly. Um, yaw speed is 55 and your, your smoothness is 33 so these are my gimbal settings uh, for cine mode uh, and, and sport mode i haven't really changed much because i don't use those modes usually i just fly in the normal mode but uh, i i guess i would use the same settings for those modes as well then we have in advanced section 30 15 and 25 so those are my expos so then we go into the camera section i usually record in mp4 and i usually record in the cine like but only when i'm not recording in hdr because hdr is normal and it's how it is but when I don't record in HDR, I use the Cinelike because I like to color grade my footage myself. Uh, I use my own LUTs and I like to tweak the colors and make them my own. So if you want to play around with the color settings in the software of your choosing, I would definitely suggest you to record in the flattest possible profile so you can do all sorts of kinds of uh, color grading one more really important thing is grid lines so here these diagonals and grid lines why because it can show you how you compose the shot if you are if you want to get cinematic footage if you want to get really beautiful shots your composition has to be on point as well and these lines and these grid lines and everything it really helps you to compose the shot properly and that is a very important thing to be uh, to be having on your screen a white balance always should be manual always do not ever leave it on auto because it will change the colors while you fly and that does not look professional that it's not cinematic it's uh, always have it on manual that's it with the settings why i really like the air 2 and i probably might even like it more than the air 2s 
is because it has uh, HDR mode. Although this mode is completely auto, you cannot change settings here. You can only you can only change the resolution that you record in and a frame rate. But all the rest is it's just auto. But it does give you quite stunning looking HDR shots. When you get the shot where it does not change the exposure and you can use it in the video, it really looks amazing. It looks incredible. This HDR mode is something that uh, I wish they would bring to their more expensive drones, but it seems that the DJI, I mean the Mavic Air 2 was the only drone that got this thing. Well, yeah, this one has HLG and D-Log, which also is kind of like HDR if you know what you're doing in color grading. But this HDR mode is like, just capture and it's done. It's, it's, it's beautiful. It always looks really, really good. And uh, yeah, this is my, probably one of my favorite things about the Air 2. One more thing why I like this drone so much is that it has these anamorphic filters. Um, Free will makes them. And they, they still have them in stock on Amazon. So if, if you want to get your own free will anamorphic filters that give you footage like this, like incredible, beautiful looking lens flares and wider field of view, then go hurry up and check them out. They are really amazing. They have also uh, ND variants, so you can have it in a bright daylight condition. And here we come to our next thing about how to unleash the full potential of your drone is when we go in the normal mode, you always should be recording at the lowest possible ISO. I personally record in 4K 25 frames per second. So my shutter should always be from 150th to 1 100th, depending on what type of footage I want to get but 150th is like that 180 degree shutter rule um, that gives you that motion blur. Okay, right now I have one 100th of a second for this camera, but if I would be waving my hand in front of that camera, it would be blurrier, but it's still kind of blurry. So basically when you have all that set, lowest possible ISO. Shutter should usually be twice as high as the frame rate. Once you've gotten to know the settings, the, the, the white balance should be manual and all the other cool, cool things about this drone, it's time to fly. But first, before we fly this drone, we will also check out the Air 2S. Now we are on the Air 2S and uh, well, the settings are mostly the same. We have our flight assistance that is usually off. Uh, all that good stuff. Control is the same. I have advanced gimbal settings, pitch speed 10, pitch smoothness 25, yaw, yaw speed 55 and yaw smoothness 33. That's all the same on all of my drones and um, advanced expo settings also 30 15 and 25 it's always the same on all of my drones it's just how i like my controls to be set and then in camera section we have something new we have normal d log and hlg these are um, color profiles that are more flatter than the cine like and normal of course and that will give you a more room to play around with when you are color grading the footage and you can actually get more out of the image if you capture in these uh, color modes also with the new update they added the color display assist like this we can see the normal colors while capturing but uh, we actually are capturing a flat image like this 
so that's 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 different with the air 2s it has a also it has a more powerful camera it has a one inch sensor and it can get more light to the sensor and uh, it just looks slightly better and sharper also the resolution of it is higher 5.4k instead of 4k which is also very much appreciated for people like me um, and also the grid lines as i said it really helps with the composition that's very very important what's different here so this one does not have the hdr mode as well it does not have the possibility to have anamorphic lenses on the drone the air 2 has the possibility of the anamorphic lenses but the air 2s does not have air 2s although has a bunch of different amazing filters for it like this uh, variable ND mist filter, which gives you this gloomy type vibe. And uh, because this camera does not have a aperture to close down, and the filters are very important in bright daylight situations, because if we would be pointing this drone outside, it would be too bright. And then we would have to crank up the shutter. And we don't want that because when we crank up the shutter, we have high shutter speed and motion. If you turn quickly, everything will be very sharp and look just jittery. But when we have the shutter at its right place, which should be always two times faster than the frame rate, then the motion is with blur, with motion blur. What It's what our eyes see and that is why it looks natural. So. ND filters, very important to these drones. I guess that's pretty much it about these. The only difference, the Air 2S, it has, it has upward sensors, but I don't trust them. I don't trust sensors at all. It has slightly higher uh, resolution. It does have the one inch sensor, which makes the images look so much better. It's, there is actually quite a lot of difference. And the D-Log and HLG modes are incredible. They do give you a lot of room to play around with in color grading. Although I kind of do like the HDR mode on the Air 2 more because it's just so easy and fun to use and it looks amazing straight out of camera and you don't have to do anything. But then again, I understand that the HLG and D-Log is much more powerful. And when you actually do play around with it, you can get like m m better shots than the HDR mode on the Air 2. But still, the strength of the Air 2, in my opinion, is that it can have the anamorphic lenses. And this one, the Air 2S, does not have anamorphic lenses. So for me... Everything that has an anamorphic lens wins. Now I think it's time to go outside and actually check out what can we do with all this because that's not it yet. We are only done with the settings. If you want to unleash the full potential of these drones, you have to know how to fly them. You have to have the skills to control those joysticks. And to do that, it takes time and effort. But once you do that, you can control the drone, something like this. So now we are in the air. We have some cables up in the sky. So be very careful to fly through them. And this is what I mean when I say that you have to know how to fly the drone. Settings won't help you. Settings can help you to get the proper image but the rest is the skills that you can achieve by flying for a very long time and uh, practicing 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 and practicing I'm currently flying with the Air 2 in the HDR mode and because I wanted to have that anamorphic look just lost the signal for a second there Okay, let's come back so what do I mean with the skills so 
to control the drone cinematically you have to know a few things you have to know how to combine motions together in one seamless beautiful shot so for example let's move in to this building by tilting down the camera lowering the altitude and then just let's go in a top-down shot of for example someone might be walking there out of this place and that's how a movie starts then we follow our subject and the subject goes into the building BAM! and we have a story and that's just done live I did not plan this I just I just fly so yeah once you have done all the settings properly once you have gotten all that it's time to fly and learn how to control the drone manually I have a bunch of different tutorials about how to control the drone I have cinematic flight tutorials I have constant flow videos where I just fly around smoothly with the sticks showing what my fingers are doing just like I'm actually demonstrating right now and let's move in like this and then let's go into a backwards motion revealing the street hopefully in the middle of it wow I actually did did achieve it to do that that's pretty cool okay something like that and if you want to learn from me go check out my playlists I a lot of people are telling me that those playlists have helped them to learn how to fly the drone more cinematically and uh, if you will have listened to what I said about the composition about the settings about the manual settings and now about how to control the drone you will be able to learn how to fly like this quite very soon maybe if you practice every day